Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome. Whoa, I didn't come here to joke. Yeah. Hello, I. Hello, I. Hello, everybody. I don't know. Sorry. I want noise makers. Anyway, today's video. Oh, what serious? I'm gonna be talking to you guys about something serious. That's why Mua, I put my hair up. Oh, by the way, my hair was done in Nigeria. Sorry, it's looking a bit messy, but the episode of my hair is also coming out. And but anyway, that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about talking about the beginning of my journey. Um, so this is part letter one of the Chronicles of Nigeria. So, you know, as a Yoruba girl, my Yoruba and me swagger. As a Yoruba babe, um, I'm I was born in the U of K. However, my mother, Twali, Twa, would take me and my siblings to Nigeria from when we were little. Like the first time I went to Nigeria, I think I was four. So we used to frequently visit Lagos. The last time I went to Nigeria was probably probably like 10 years, seven years ago. Like it's been a while since I've touched back. I made up my, made up my decision. Sorry, English is my first language to be confirmed. Um, I decided to go to Nigeria 2022. So as you need to do, first of all, I needed to renew my price priority. That's where the problem starts. Nigeria, English, British Embassy. Whether I want to say could any daphony, I don't know yet, but that's that's the journey. Yeah. When you're trying to renew your passport, um, because mine had expired for quite some years, you need to go to the embassy um to renew your passport. You, you fill out the application online, obviously, um, and then you pay and then you they give you an appointment to go to the embassy. Obviously, once it starts bubble new, new stuff where you now need to have NIN. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I realized I'm looking at the... Anyway, let me be looking at the camera because I need to look at you highball to highball so we can connect. Um, yeah, so you need to have an NIN. I'm going to put what the NIN stands for because I can't even remember. That's how traumatic the experience is, even though it was yesterday in my head. Um, yeah, you need to now have an NIN. So I did all of that, thankfully, because my mum also renewed her passport that year. So she told me what I need to do. So I've renewed my NIN. Well, renewed. I didn't have one. I got my NIN with one of those. There's, a, there's many stores shops around England, London, where you can get them, get your NIN if you are if you already have a passport kind of thing. Um, actually, no, even if you don't have passports, but you're getting one, you can get NIN. Anyway, so yeah, I got that. So I took all my documents, everything you do um, in the application, print it out, your receipt, print it out, your NIN, print it out, print everything out. Anything you, you, you're doing in, in terms of getting a Nigerian passport, print it out. So I took that to the embassy on a fateful day. On a fateful day in July, guys, you need to remember that day. Fateful day on July, maybe 20, I'll be something like that. So I went with a queue. I queued, you have to queue because the embassy is not a real place. I'm gonna say that a lot. Um, where you have to queue hours ahead. Some people are there from like 6 a.m. For an embassy that opens at 9 a.m. supposedly, um, people are queuing from like 6 a.m. So I joined the queue near seven something, eight o'clock latest. So not a bad spot, but not the greatest. So obviously you enter now that traumatic place that God has forsaken. Anyway, moving on. If you have an appointment, they will let you in. If you don't have an appointment, I'm sorry, you're not going anywhere. Um, so I had an, obviously I had an appointment. They give you a ticket number. You wait for your ticket number to be called. Obviously there's only two people working on it. Eight registrar, eight registers, but there's only ever two or three people max walking and um yeah that's traumatic in itself and then you've got hundreds of people with like children babies it's just oh every time i think about that place i want to cry um yeah and you wait for your ticket number to be called so when your ticket number is called you give them the documents that you have or whatever they'll give you back um your documents this is if it's going well by the way they'll give you back they'll take the documents they need ah sorry how can i forget before you go, Omani postal lover. What did I say? Postal lover. You need a postal lover. That one, don't be stupid. Get it beforehand. Before you go to the MC, make sure you have postal lover. I'm saying that. That's how they said it. Postal lover. Make sure you have a postal order because if you don't, 
that's another headache there's one normally one guy he's not there i don't know if he's there every single day that he sells postal orders he'll add his little um what is it compensation no um commission sorry so it's gonna be a little bit more expensive but make sure you have your postal order because they will not let you in that in that in that embassy so yeah they'll take your postal order and any kind of documents that they need um and then you will you they will tell you to go upstairs <laughs> oh my father in heaven as i now go upstairs problem so i now go upstairs they put me in the room because i was actually quite early so i was in the the I don't think I was even up to 100 on my ticket number because yeah, I was quite early so there wasn't that many people in the room. However, my personal experience was, dis it was distressing. So you'll go in and sit down, you'll wait for your name to now be called. So normally they will take like your documents, then somebody will come in, call X, Y, all these names or whatever, a bunch of people, then you'll go to another room where you'll do your biometrics and all of that kind of stuff. So obviously in my unfortunate situation, the one, they didn't used to come, they didn't call my name. They didn't call everybody that I do hello hi with in my queue, in the line upstairs, they are going, they are coming. I mean, they are going, they are not coming back. They are going, so I'm thinking, sorry, have they forgotten me? So obviously I now stand up, ha. <laughs> Must stand up I now go to ask anybody because obviously customer service is not a thing in that place no one's helping you no one's offering solution no one's doing anything so I'm now looking for one of the workers supposed workers anyway and um, they what do they do they I'm asking him oh by the way is it by chance that you may have called this name so I'll give them my you know my full name or whatever and I'm like ah, obviously they're so rude ah, what what do you mean what do you mean I'm walking I'm walking mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I don't know you're working what it, make it make sense I know you're working isn't this your job and um, yeah so he's like I'm walking I'm walking I don't ask me I don't know I said okay scary Next person I ask, oh, like, I just want to know, like, if my name has been called, what's the process in case it has been called and I miss it or whatever. And maybe trying to help them help myself. So, obviously, everyone's rude. Rude, rude, rude. So, I'm now like, wow, these people are taking me for idiots. So, then, um, one person, I'm now waiting. Now, I'm even trying to enter the room because, like, all those people that are supposed to help me, they're not helping me. So, I said, let me quickly go to the room where they're doing the biometrics and ask them. As I've tried to go to that room, the guy that's in charge, I don't know what he, yeah, let me say a manager, their manager, whatever. He now calls my name in the other room that I'm supposed to be in. And then I'm like, ah, Lua Shil, they've called my name. God is, ah, come on, you know, I can be out of here before 1 p.m. And um, the guy then sees me and he goes, no, they, we will not serve her. Sorry, pardon. They actually refused to serve me, guys. They, the man said, this one don't do our own. I said, egg me, egg me. What, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, sorry. He refuses to attend to me. He, he refuses to let the biometrics lot attend to me. I'm thinking, Uncle, sorry. So, Sha, Mora, we, do, we know, do we know ourselves? Do we know each other that I've done something for your life? I'm thinking, no. What did I do? You have to see me. What's going on, whatever. So we're going back and forth, back and forth, and then, um, I'm literally begging guys. I don't know why it's resorted in me begging to be seen like I'm begging to be seen in the embassy I don't understand so as I'm begging them I'm begging them and I'm like can you let me in can you not even let me in can you do my thing please because I don't understand my my passport my all of that is here do it bruv then after begging 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 and I'm like uncle bruv I've been here because obviously uncle and auntie is the only language to understand these people they think there's a nasty complex in the embassy that they think anyone that's British that's below the age of 30 is disrespectful and lacks home training, which I think is unfair because it's not true. Some of us, we are, we are, we are British in our sense, but we're not British in our mind. Anyway, so I'm not even trying to speak your about like, that. maybe that's the language we were used to understand. So I'm like, hey, Josa, hey, but me, I've been here since morning. Please. Then he sees my ticket number and then he's like, oh, so you're not even lying. I said, why would I lie? Anyway, long story short, he now lets me, lets one of them attend to me. Um, and then, so we're now doing my biometrics. <laughs> 
Now the problem of probleming, the problem really starts when um, they're doing my biometrics. So they're obviously looking through my files, looking through my documents, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Then he's like, ah, sorry, madam. He's like, maybe there's something wrong. I'm like, what's wrong now? I've got, I've brought everything. I've brought my blood. I, what again? Then he's like, ah, the names are not matching. I said, they are because my names are X, Y, Z. The NIN is X, Y, Z. What's not matching? Then the, he goes that the NIN, the NIN and my passport are not correlating because of there's a dot on my passport. But obviously when you fill out your NIN um, details, you can't put a dot. Cause I asked the man, copy it the same way. And the man doing my NIN was like, the system doesn't allow them to put dots. I said, well, I need the NIN, so whatever. So we get to the embassy, I explained that to them as well. It's like the, the, the system that the NIN is created on, they don't use to do dots. He said, ah, I said, don't ah me because, and by the way, bearing in mind, I'm getting a new passport. So if and if it doesn't match, you're renewing my passport. You can take off the dot, no? Okay, cool. Cause clearly we, don't, we all didn't go to the same school. So he's like, Oh, you need to remove the dot. And then also he's now telling me what my middle name is, by the way, the embassy are not the people them. I was going to call his name, but let me not do that. He's now telling me my name is my middle name is not my middle name. I said, Oh, okay, cool. So then he now says, you have to change your NIN. You can't, you can't continue that your application because you need to sort out your NIN to match whatever. So I'm like, I don't know how you expect me to do that because obviously NINs, you can't change them. You can't delete them and you can't get a new one. Once it's done, it's created, it's created. So she's like, ah, oh, you need to go to Nigeria to change. I looked at the woman and she said, I need to go to Nigeria. How am I going to, okay. Let the one minute silence because how am I going to get to Nigeria without, okay, cool. So then she's like, ah, don't you have you, anybody that you know? I said, what if I didn't though? But what if I didn't have somebody in Nigeria at that particular time? Thankfully, my mom's brother was able to um, help me change the NIN details or whatever, whatever they quote unquote said was the name, my middle name wasn't matching, whatever, cool. So I've gone back by the way. So this is now number two and now, they are not able to do, they do my biometrics, funny enough, they do it. So let's say this is two days apart. They do my biometrics. So that's where they take your, you know, your fingerprint, all that good stuff and take your name, blah, 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 picture, yada, yada, yada. Cool, that's all done. So I'm thinking that was, let's say July 20. This is now July 20 something. I'm like, wow, we done it, passports. So when you do your biometrics and all of that kind of stuff, they now give you sheets of paper. They give you um, a receipt. And on that receipt, you will take a picture of it on your phone, make sure it's clear, make sure you can read everything, all the information. Um, and on that, on that um, receipt that they give, um, there's normally a collection date. That's like two months from the date that you've come. So obviously I went in July, so my collection date was actually my birthday, which is the 26th of September. That's the long, that's the longest it should take. Obviously it shouldn't even take that long. And it's supposed to be delivery by the way, cause you pay for your postal or that. So then you go back to the room that you were waiting for to do your biometrics and they give you um, your envelope, um, your postal order envelope that, um, that your passport should come in in it. You put your, your information, your address, um, your the you put the embassy's address on it and then you put your they take your receipt that's it sorry it's, it's been a while they take your receipt with it so I'm like oh god he has done me well oh my soul rise up and pray so I'm thinking what is your I finish all that's left is for the knocking of the door from Royal Mail to give me my passport and so month one goes by August, <clears throat> month two, it's now September. I'm thinking, rah, my passport's not here. Two months, this is a bit mad. But I'm like, my September's so busy. You know, one of my good sisters got married. Um, yeah, I should, do, I should do a life update, maybe later on anyway. One of my friends got married um, and I had a show, hallelujah. I had a show that was running um, throughout September. And then obviously the month I was born, um, so September was such a busy month. I don't think I really did that I didn't have my passport and I was, you know, doing so much. And then for my birthday, I flew out as well. So I was like, if anything, by the time I come back from my birthday holiday, 
my passport would be there <coughs> so i thought so obviously i've come back now and um my mom's not around either funny enough she's in nigeria too so i'm like when i come home i should get a, you know cheeky little gray envelope should be there i've come home in the end of september and my passport is nowhere to be seen so i'm now thinking this is a bit funny so then we get to october now and i'm like nah lizzie I'm annoyed because one thing about the embassy is it takes so much of your time. I can't, you have to take time off work. You have to plan your days. It's just, it's, it's annoying. So now in October, I now have to go back to the embassy to see what I've won because where's, where, where my passport at? Where my passport at? Um, I've now gone back in October. He's like, your passport? Ah, there was, there was many issues there's been problem there's been this there's been that i said i don't care what you're saying where's my passport i come to collect my passport ah uh, oh, sorry sorry i must say sorry am i dumb what sorry they didn't say sorry ah you know you know it's he apple like that sometimes or whatever and then he goes ah it's our it's our fault after keeping me there bearing in mind from nine to about 12 keeping me waiting for an update 12 o'clock comes or something and he's like ah we have seen where we need to what we need to do we need to do some things it's on our parts because i was like but what if i didn't come you guys would have just left my application on the chair because remember my passport's not even been it's not even gone to production it's not even been it hasn't started basically he's like we need to do something sorry ma so i'm sorry because this one was saying sorry ma so we don't worry in the next two weeks you have your passport we will fix it on our side and then you will have your passport guys october that was the first week of october second week of october third week of october fourth week of october nothing november by the way now i've started going every week October, I've gone to the embassy every freaking week to get an update on my passport because, by the way, I'm going to Nigeria in December. So, like, I'm like, it's not funny anymore now because I'm trying to get on a flight in December and my passport's still nowhere to be seen. And what makes it worse, one of the guys, obviously, you know, the embassy is full of Nigerian men who are disgusting. That's the best way I can put it because they see a pretty, well even a pretty, I mean, I'm a pretty girl, but they see a, a, a girl, a young girl, a young girl, cause I'm a girl at this point. And someone's trying to move to you. Someone's trying to do, you know, eh, la, 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 story, where are you from? Oh my gosh, oh my, you're, you're a Niger girl. Oh my gosh, oh boy, but all that, you know, the typical nasty older men flirting regime or whatever. But obviously, I mean, no, smart, like, I have sense. Um, because I'm like Lizzie, you can't be rude. You can't be mean. You know this man might be able to help you. Sorry that this is the that's how low it's got. That sometimes you have to be nice to be helped, and I hate that. That's how. Anyway, we'll get into Nigeria another day. Um, but yes, I'm thinking. Okay, let me be. Let me be nice. Let me not be rude. Let me you know hear what Uncle's saying or whatever. And Uncle's you know taking um, my case up and you know took my number of course um, and he's like oh no don't worry i'll do it for you i'll do it for you i'll do it for you. i help you i help you help you or whatever uncle's texting me about only run with shit like he's texting me about rubbish that i'm thinking is this man okay but anyway i'm still focused on the eye on the prize my passport so i'm like <laughs> and every time i see this man by the way he sent me away one of the times oh sorry before uncle was doing toasting toasting he was the one that sent me away. Imagine I've come one of the time, the first time I've come in November, he doesn't allow me in. He doesn't allow me in. Let that sink in. He's like, people that are come to get an update, they don't come till one o'clock. I said, in what country does that work in? What are you saying to me? So he legit doesn't let me in. I'll never forget the day. That day was raining. It was raining hard. I was livid. I was livid. I had to call my mum because that's my voice of reason when I'm crazy. I called my mum screaming on the phone. I don't understand how your people... I was so angry. Anyway, but yeah, so I when, when I've come back, same uncle, imagine, that's now doing... Um, Oh, how are you? How's life? How's whatever? Is the one anyway? 
rubbish the stone that the the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone hallelujah anyway um so yeah he's now i don't think he remember remembers what he done and i can't be bothered to remind him because obviously i need his help uh, he's trying to help me help me kind of get me in trying to say i'll fast track i'll fast track i'll do all of that quite a long story short we now get to december guys i still don't have my passport december 1st <laughs> december 2nd remember i'm going december 10th I still don't have my passport. I'm now like, I'm beyond consolable. Everybody around me knew about my passport saga. Anybody that knew me knew that we, we did prayer, guys. I did prayer um, because it was just getting ridiculous. It was getting out of hand. And one thing I kept saying, and I still hate, and this is probably what I hate about the most, about the embassy the most. There is zero accountability. There is no one to complain to. There is no one to report to. If you know anybody that I can complain to, because I promise you this 2022, I'm going to take down that Nigerian embassy. Emini right here is going to be me that takes them down. Because what they've done to me in 2022, it's not, it's not okay. It's not acceptable. Anyway, it's now like one day or two days to my flight, guys. And I'm like... I don't know how I'm getting to this country because obviously at that time I didn't know you could travel on a expired passport. So obviously these con men, they ask me, they make, they tell me that I need to now pay for a travel certificate, an ETC, an emergency travel certificate for something they did wrong. I said, you should give me that certificate because it's your fault I don't have my passport. I've been here since July. It's December. It's your fault. And um they make me pay 120 freaking pounds sterling. So yeah, so I've now had to pay for this stupid emergency travel certificate. I didn't really need to, by the way, um, because obviously when I traveled, I had my expired passport that was canceled. So I was a bit scared that because it was canceled, they may not allow me in, even though I know there were like expired passports are, you can do that. But I didn't know that at the time. Then obviously when, you get, when I, um, when I was at the embassy, they were like, obviously these con men, 419ers is what I call them because they knew that, but they didn't tell me that. They were like, no, they won't let you in. They won't let you travel. You have to get this, you have to get that, you have to get that. So con their way into making me buy it. Even the way the guy did it for me. Do you think he did it in the embassy? Okay, cool. We somehow did postal order because you need that's what you're paying for 120 pounds for postal order but did i pay that 120 pounds in the embassy absolutely not this man that's been helping me um took me somewhere even that one i was praying in time i was labrocode i was lamenting because i said lord god this is not real he took me somewhere to go and get that postal order because in the embassy they weren't doing it anymore anyway but that's part one part two is coming it's been amazing Please make sure you like, subscribe, comment below your <coughs> sorry, your embassy stories. I'd love to know from all over the world. I'd love to know.